What's going on guys, it's Asad here from Platinum Remaps. We're going to be doing a quick video on how to use Bimmer code and should you use Bimmer code. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, these app-based coding programs, uh, they're a bunch of rubbish, don't use them. Um, it's going to mess up your car. Now, there is some truth to that, but at the same time, it's there is some false allegations going on there. So we're going to go through the actual process of Bimmer code, how to use it and the best connection method. So let's get straight into it. Um, we're in a BMW today, so X1. Now we are connected on our iPad to Bimmer code. First, you have to purchase your license. Once you've purchased your license, you would have to pick an adapter. So I'll show you how this works. You, can, you On this little section there, you click adapter. Now there's a bunch of wireless OB, uh, OBD dongles you can get. Some of you may even own one of these already, that's great. But from my experience, if you want to use something like this, the best bet to use is an ethernet cable. Now, how do you get an ethernet cable into a tablet or phone? It's a good question. We're going to leave a link down below in the description to purchase an adapter for your mobile phone or tablet for you to connect your ethernet cable. And we're also going to leave a link where to purchase your ethernet cable because we sell some on our store. So this is an iPad Pro. We have a USB-C connector to an ethernet connector this has got the ethernet cable in there and it goes straight down into the obd port below the steering wheel on the right hand side um so we've got that selected just the ethernet cable we're going to go back and we are done here so let's connect up press the connect button this is a bmw x1 let's continue just going to identify all the control modules and also another thing is when you're using the ethernet cable it's the fastest possible connection you can get with this app now what happens here on the first screen is a bunch of modules pop up these are the codable modules for this vehicle some vehicles will have more some will have less some will have less options per module but it's um, all of actual um, modules that can be coded so I'm, I'm only going to go for one or two modules here just to show you um, some of the cool functions that this app has. And also I'm going to go through the pros and cons of using this app. So let's start with the body domain controller, which controls doors, lighting, um, mirrors. Now, here we go. Go through little options here. Okay. In July brightness, 100%. Um, we can shut off the iDrive system when driver door is open. That's a nice function to have. Uh, auto start stop function. Some people find the auto start stop feature very annoying, so they can turn that off or just put it on memory. Now you can register a new battery to the vehicle via the app, which is really good. Uh, brake force display activation speed. Okay, that's really good. Uh, convenient opening. Um, okay, here we go. Convenient opening. Most of it's already activated on most cars, it will be. Um, this vehicle doesn't have comfort access, so can't mess with any of those options. If we just go down, we've got options for doors and windows. The default driving mode, which when you start the car, it automatically goes into comfort. LED conversions, fog lights, mirrors, fold, unfold mirrors automatically. There is no electric folding mirrors on this vehicle so can't put that function on uh, we can put a mirror tilt when you put it into reverse the passenger mirror pops down change the percentage of the tilt value which is really good um, heated seats temperatures and uh, do, 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 do. welcome lights bunch of features there window cleaning once you've picked your desired options that you want for your vehicle you press the code button there which isn't available right now because we haven't selected any options and it'll go through the coding let me go to the head unit because i want to code something on the head unit and i'll show you how the coding works okay so checkbox acoustical lock confirmation what that means is in your iDrive system right here we will enable a checkbox to turn off the beep on lock and unlock so let's activate that. Right now it's not active. Let's activate that. We'll go back. 
Okay, um, that's the ringtone. Checkbox daytime running lights. So we have the option on the iDrive to turn the, running, the daytime running lights on and off. We are going to activate that. Brilliant. Start animation. Right now it's connected drive one, which is the default animation. We can mess around with that and change it to a bunch of things like Rolls Royce Mini um, Christmas, which is funny, the Alpina one. What we'll do is go to, uh, let's say M variant. That's a nice cool one for this one. I'm going to show you how that works as well. Uh, tire pressure display. Uh, try tire pressure control is display pressure only, but some people can change that to temperature, which is really cool. Service history is enabled. Hi-Fi hi loudspeaker system. That's for a retrofit option. We don't have that enabled, so we're going to leave that. Sports display color at the moment orange. We can change that to red. Let's go back. Okay, everything I want to do code in the head unit it has been coded. I press this code button there. Hold on, let it focus. Code. Start coding. And so that's finished coding. Go to instrument cluster on this one. Everything that we want is activated already. Tailgate function module. Activate that. Code it. Start coding. Oh, this will also clear any errors that the coding causes after it's coded, which is handy. Now, I'm pretty much done with this. I'm not going to go for a bunch of things on this. I don't like, personally, I don't really like to use Bimmer code unless it's for something I know Bimmer code can do easily. Um, now, when I was saying to you before, let's zoom out. Where do I zoom out? Okay, there we go. So yeah, when I was saying to you before about um, people using app-based um, coding systems to code their vehicles, I use it myself. Um, I don't use it constantly. I do use, um, for BMWs, I do use ESYS, uh, WinKFP, uh, NCD Experts. This, the, the basic apps you can get on your laptop, um, I do use those, I pr that's my preferred method. But if someone says to me, um, Assad, I want, I want a seatbelt delete um, and I know it's a vehicle that's stable I've got my stable connection with via the Ethernet cable I'm just gonna plug in the BIM code and use it now on e-series vehicles especially the e90 series e91 e90 e92 I have seen over and over again people using Carly or BIM code and they fry their FRM modules leaving them abandoned without the use of lights or windows working and they have to either replace or repair their FRM module um, I've seen modules crash because people have killed their battery during the whole sitting in their car trying to figure out what they want to code and then the battery dies during coding and that module's fried and it's very difficult to get everything up and running again. Now, I suggest if you want to use one of these apps, Bimmer Code or Kali, something like that, um, OBD11, especially for, um, let's say, fag cars, then use it for a DIY thing. Use it for your own cars don't don't use it for other people's cars because unless you have a stable connection of course you don't want to be messing with other people's cars you don't want to be going around charging what what professional coders charge for a coding session and you're just pulling out an app um now i am going to say again i do use uh bimmer code sometimes on on customers vehicles but i let them know and most of the time i don't even charge them for it because it's just why am i going to charge someone for something like that um yeah it's just it's a preference now the only time i feel like using coding based apps is wrong or has been used wrong is when there's people out there um you doing this day in day out they'll charge you for a coding session 180 pounds or 200 pounds and they pull out their carly or the obd11 or 
or BIMA code or something like that, they'll go through everything on their phone, code it and say it's done. Um, these apps, they can code, but they can't code everything. They can't code um, certain advanced features or code things into vehicles. For example, um, when I recently had somebody asking me they wanted to upgrade their headlights on their BMW um, or their M3 and they wanted to go to Icons, I coded via um, ESIS rather than ha using BIMA code because BIMA code won't work and I wouldn't even risk that anyway to try and flash something like that in. And also you make sure you use a stable battery support, support unit, uh, keep your battery voltage good, make sure it's not, it doesn't die during this process. Um, do your research, don't use Bluetooth dongle, I, I'm not a fan of Bluetooth dongles at all. Um, and yeah, for any of the things that we've mentioned in this video, please look at the description down below. We are going to link the adapters that you might need if you want to plug in your phone or uh, a tablet to do some coding. Also, we're going to link the, the Ethernet cable for BMWs. And yeah, um, also the gear we use to make our videos. No, it's not really much, just a camera and a, and a little that, um, handle. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.